Hello world and welcome to this episode of the Ronjiro Japan podcast, the place where we provide insights on Japan from people who know Japan. Japanese calligraphy is everywhere here. Its simple lines and curves made up only of ink strokes on paper are almost minimalist in their simplicity, but at the same time, highly emotional and packed with expression. It's a fascinating subject, and who better to explore it with than someone who lives it? Our guest today is an award-winning Japanese calligraphy artist whose works have been exhibited around the world. She joins us to talk about Japanese calligraphy, the art of the moment. Our guest is the talented Kumiko. I'm your host JT, and this is Ronjiru. Let's discuss Japan. Kumiko, thank you for joining us on the Ronjiro Japan podcast. Ah, thank you, JT, for inviting me today. It's good to talk with you. I've、um, met you before. I've seen some of your work before. Your calligraphy is beautiful. Ah,、oh, thank you. You're very welcome. You are a very artistic woman. You were a graphic designer. Then you were an art director in an advertising agency. You're an accomplished koto player and certified instructor. You take beautiful pictures of nature.、Uh, you make artistic-looking food. You hang out with musicians and artists. When did you first start getting interested in art, and、um, why? Art always has been around me since I was child. Maybe because of my grandfather, of my father's side. He was an artist.、Oh. He was an artist. He was a, a painter of Japanese paintings. Of Japanese paintings. So, yeah. So there are many his artworks around me since I was child in my house. I see. And I don't know why, but. The people around me always told me that I had, I got blood from my grandfather.、Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why, you know, everyone said that to me, but、um, I was told like that. Maybe because I was weird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. Art always around me has been always around me. So I, I don't think I was in was interested in art or. I think it came naturally. Art always has been in my life. So, yeah. So I was kind of guided. Mm, by nature. Tell us a bit about your journey from、uh, being a graphic designer in advertising、um, through to being a global award-winning calligrapher who now also teaches calligraphy to students, etc. Must have been quite a journey from、uh, visual arts into written art. Yeah.、Um... Since I was very young, I always wanted to have some kind of profession. I I didn't think about、uh, graphic design. I don't know why I chose graphic design as my profession. But、uh, I had worked as a graphic designer or a director for about nearly twenty years.、Mm-hmm. I worked in a company advertising agency, design office, and sometimes、uh, I worked as a freelancer. And 
I worked maybe 12, 15 hours every day or sometimes worked all night. Mm. And that was not the, maybe not now, but uh, I was not a special. At that time, the world, everybody worked like that in that world. Right. But I was okay when I was young, but uh, it's getting older. I started to have a sick or ill I see. after I finished the project. Oh, yes. But I always wanted to work um, until I get old woman. So I started to feel I cannot do this forever. Uh -huh. But I liked the uh, design. I like designing. So that kind of job fits me, suitable for me. Because, I'm sure. because you've been an artist since you were a child. <laughs> At that time, I don't know. At that time, I didn't think so. I just like designing. So that job fits me and suitable for me. So I could work so hard. Uh, and at about that time, I got an award of some kind of brochure, company brochure, the design of company brochure. Mm. I've got an award. So I went to a ceremony party for that. And of course, there are the people who got an award and they stood up on the stage and got an award and so looked so proud and happy. And well, me too, because I got an award. But uh, looking at those people, I felt, um, so what? <laughs> it's, it was so cynical. It was so strange, very cynically. So why did you want to start learning calligraphy? That day I started to think Maybe this is the time I should change my career. I see. Yeah, I had worked already 18, 17, 18 years as a designer and a director and worked so hard, mm. enjoying the designing. But at the party, at the ceremony party, looking at other people who got an award, I thought, this is not my world I should be in. It was strange. And I liked, uh, at that time, I really get into drawing a sketch of the nude, the human body. Oh, yes. So I went to this, I used to go to the school for that as a change, mm -hmm. working as a designer. And somebody in the class gave me the invitation card of somebody's solo exhibition, solo Japanese calligraphy exhibition. Mm -hmm. And there was a picture of the calligraphy. And that was not typical calligraphy I knew. And that was modern type. So before that, I didn't know the calligraphy is like very classical thing. So I didn't know there is a category of modern Japanese calligraphy. Which was more artistic than the, the traditional kind that you had known before that. Completely different, very freestyle, you know. I see. So I went to the exhibition. The modern Japanese calligraphy sticked in my head and I thought maybe I should learn it. It's like a hit by a thunder or something. I see. So I started to look for the school of modern Japanese calligraphy and found it and started to go doing design job um, and 
practice, practice, practice every day and working. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, I was going to be a professional calligrapher. So I thought I should practice every day. Little by little, I started to quit. I started to talk to the people. I think that I'm thinking to quit design job. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, they, they said, okay, uh, I see. And of course, they stopped giving me a job. Mm -hmm. And then I, little by little, I turned, you know, to concentrate uh, doing practicing shodo, the Japanese calligraphy. So um, the modern style of more free and artistic Japanese calligraphy allowed you to escape the, the bad aspects of the job that were getting you down, but also allowed you to keep uh, expressing yourself artistically. Yeah, when I started, I didn't think about to express. At that time, I also, I still think I'm not an artist or... <laughs> you are. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> But I didn't think so. Everybody said so, but I, do, I didn't understand why everybody said so. I am not. I, and I just liked uh, Japanese calligraphy. Mm -hmm. But of course, at the beginning, I practiced and practiced and practiced the basic thing. Mm -hmm. Like a um, painter learn how to design sketch at the beginning. Right. So that was not uh, interesting for me, but uh, I thought I should, you know, I need it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought there only one group of modern Japanese calligraphy. So I found one and I started to go there. The group I joined was a group uh, that... We are Japanese, so we should write Japanese in a freestyle. Mm -hmm. And we use a Chinese character and native hiragana and katakana and Roman. There are four different kinds of character we, we use in a mix, mixture when we write. Now I, I'm happy. Now I'm happy. I thought it was good. I joined that group because yes, I'm Japanese. I can, I can learn how to. It's really difficult to mix uh, of Chinese character hiragana and katakana with a brush and black ink. And the balance is really difficult. Black, the balance of black and white. I see. But um, I now I think I joined right right group i think uh, quite obviously you did um tokyo uh, yokohama osaka new york uh, paris uh, uh, monaco madrid prague taipei i'm probably leaving somewhere out but you've done exhibitions all over the world since you started being um, a, a cal calligraphy artist um and in all those places that you went what was the response to your work? At the beginning, maybe, I don't know, several years, I tried to exhibit uh, the exhibition in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I was, my work was, has been selected or sometimes got an award. And the company who planned the exhibition in foreign country for a, for a Japanese artists, that kind of company started to call me. I don't know how they found me. Maybe they went to the exhibition in Japan mm -hmm. and they saw my calligraphy and they started to call me. Most of them I said no, no, no. But uh, the first one was Prague. 
the exhibition in Prague. Yes. And I don't know why I thought I should do it, but I felt I should do it, this one, for sure. No reason, but... Uh, and then I got an award that I got Grand Prix. Wow. I don't know why. In Prague. So I went to Praha to look at it, and it was fun. And they displayed my art piece in the best, best place. That was a mm-hmm. really nice building. So, and mm-hmm. since then, other companies started to call me and something like that it happens. Um, presumably, most of the people who saw your work do not read Japanese. So they were looking at it as a piece of art um, without understanding what the characters uh, mean, presumably. Um, and I guess my question is, the fact that you won the Grand Prix, which is an amazing thing, what is the attraction, do you think, of Japanese calligraphy for non-Japanese, let's say, art lovers or, or people who are practicing it? Before I started to go to abroad for the exhibition, I had a hard non-Japanese loves calligraphy. Japanese calligraphy is very popular in foreign country, other country. So I thought maybe because of the black and white and the line, only line, not paint. Right. And maybe that's, uh, maybe attracts them. The simplicity. I thought. Yeah. But uh, I started to go to abroad for the exhibition and talk to the people there and I recognize they taught me also and I recognized uh, especially in Europe um, they interested in paintings of course much mm-hmm. much more than Japanese calligraphy and I've heard um, they are not interested in a classical Japanese calligraphy at all. Really? Yeah. They, I think, they think, uh, they look at it at, as a word or a letter mm-hmm. rather than looking at one of the art like paintings. They cannot read. And of course, they ask, uh, what is this written? Mm. And maybe they're explaining the blah, 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 blah. I say, oh, that's all. Uh. Anyway, even they know what's in there, but they don't feel it because they cannot read. So I think that's one of the reasons. Right. And it's not colorful. Somebody told me in Paris, uh, Kumiko, you maybe put more color or something like that. They are more interested in. <laughs> but no, I no. use color sometimes. I use gold and silver oh, and do you? color with a black and gray. So it's nothing special for me. So I said, okay, next time I use more color or something like that. Right. The person told me they're like, uh, they want to put uh, paintings or art on the wall of their living room or house. Of course, everybody is having a hard time in normal life. Sometimes bad things, sometimes good things, okay, but many times bad things or a hard time. And came home and they want to heal looking at the paint or art they want to relax Hmm. so many people want to see colorful thing or something like that 
but uh, the on the other hand, the people who is um, who is interested in Japanese calligraphy, I think the kind of people is just uh, the kind of people are interested in learning language, different language, or Chinese character. Sure. Something, you know, because Chinese character is, there are so many uh, letters and characters. But some people, of course, are uh, interested in Japanese calligraphy as an art or something like that. But I was told uh, not traditional calligraphy. Mm-hmm. But uh, fortunately, my art pieces looks like uh, drawing a picture. Um, I draw very freestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it ma- maybe it matched the their favor or something. Nice. They loved it sometimes, you know, because maybe because my art pieces look like a yeah painting. Let's um, have a look at a few pieces of your work. And for those listening to the podcast, I'll post all photos on the website at ronjirujaban.com. Let's start with this one. You were mentioning Prague earlier. That's the one from Prague, right? The, you, the piece of calligraphy that you mentioned earlier. And you got the Grand Prix for that. Yeah. That's fantastic. That piece that you put in is now a part of the permanent exhibit at the National Museum of Prague. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, let's look at another one. Won't you tell us a little bit about this photo? What is the character? Where is this? Paris. This Paris, okay. Small gallery uh, near Eiffel Tower. Yes. Uh, the top one, the three different letter, and means ko ko ro. It means uh, heart. Mm-hmm. It's uh, hiragana, it's native Japanese. And what about the uh, character below that? That one is a pictograph. The letter is the light, hikari. That's the pictograph. And that was the oldest character of hikari, oh, light. It? It's a picture. It's a painting. Yes. <clears throat> this character is the beginning. It's the start. Mm-hmm. And then... After long, many years, it's been changing the style. Now it's a character we use. Right. About this one? It's a hotaru. Firefly. Firefly. Yeah. I use a gray ink. Mm-hmm. I had never seen Firefly, but it was my image. Where was this exhibition? Uh, this is Mon- Monaco. Monaco. Oh. You get around. Very nicely done. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, shifting gears a little bit. Um, I'm going to give my audience a very short Japanese lesson that you can help me with. There are two words in Japanese that are translated into the word calligraphy in English. One of those words is shuji. And one of those words is shodo, which you've mentioned already. And because they're both, they both use ink and brush, and they are both translated as calligraphy, I thought it would be interesting for you to try and explain to my audience what is the difference between shuji and shodo. When I started to learn shodo, I didn't understand the difference, but um, shuji is to learn how to write letters and words in a proper way, in a good balance and right way. Mm-hmm. Basically here in Japan, the elementary school students or junior high school students learn shuji. 
at school. So mm-hmm. kind of shuji is like a, um, for children, for students, how to learn letters, words, basically in Chinese character. And shodo is,、uh, of course, it's the same to learn the basic thing, how to write letters and words in a proper way. It's the same. But uh, uh, shodo is uh, also、um, shodo is to express yourself.、Mm-hmm. Um, express your heart. It's an art part. Sh- shuji is like a learning character. Shodo is like more art. When you look at the actual word shodo, it's,、uh, if you translate it, it's often called uh, the, uh, the, the art of writing. You see it.、Um, A lot. But if you translate the word shodo directly, like literally, into English, it's、uh, the way of writing, the path, the way.、Um, what are the characteristics of that way? The way is connect. I don't know, but to connect the way of thinking of to respect. Of everything.、Mm-hmm. For example, when you write calligraphy,、um, we say sit upright and keep your back straight. Yes. And try to calm. Take a big breath for a few times. To try to calm yourself, calm your mind, and try to concentrate. Forget about other things, you know. Think nothing, try not to think anything else. Just、mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how quiet inside, and then face, and then write, start to write, and The way of thinking is,、mm, the way is, I think, similar o f the way of flower or tea ceremony or the kind of the way thing. Try to calm and try to look inside of yourself and enjoy the sound, enjoy the smell, and Enjoy the listening and smelling and tasting, or that kind of five senses. I don't know. I think they connect, connect that kind of things, the way connects that kind of things. From, I it, think it, it sounds a little bit almost like you were trying to.、Uh, Explain it's like a meditation. Yeah, I think、uh, meditation is maybe one of, one of them. So, does that mean or does it suggest that it's difficult to write beautiful calligraphy if you're not quiet inside? Well, it is said other people, but.、Um, <laughs> But me, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just, of course, other calligraphy t e a c h e r got mad if students were chatting.、Mm-hmm. Um, I saw it. The one of the t e a c h e r got really mad. Don't talk. Just concentrate, or something like that. And I was there and I was looking at it, and I thought, of course, the kids was like, you know, was so scared. And of course, they became quiet. 
because of scared. And、mm. I was there and I was looking at them and I, I thought, I cannot do that and I don't think that's the right way. But the teacher, I, I understand why teacher got mad because to respect, you know,、mm-hmm. when, before you write and respect the way of doing calligraphy. Sit upright, don't chat, blah, 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 blah. Don't, you know. So I understand. But、uh, at the same time, <laughs> doesn't, might doesn't make sense, but I thought, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not chatting? <laughs> Because、uh, calligraphy is to express yourself, you know. So try not to think about other things.、Mm. Is it possible? That's、mm. how I feel, you know. So maybe I'm different from others. You're a rebel. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not?、Oh. If you feel sad, why don't you write it? You know, might can express something. You know, you can, you cannot. If you feel happy, why not? And if you feel, if you are tired or a hard time and Bad thing happened. Well, why don't you write it? You know, that's maybe that's why you preferred the artistic、uh, style of calligraphy to the traditional style because you found it as a way to express feelings, whereas the traditional style、uh, convinces you to be quiet inside. I don't know. I, I like both.、Uh, I understand. Uh, the, I ha- sometimes I do very quiet and don't want to hear anything, just concentrate.、Mm-hmm. But、um, I like both s t y l e But、um, maybe I'm the difference between other calligraphers and me is I'm,、mm, I don't know the word in English, I might be a Very different way of thinking.、Mm-hmm. I, I teach calligraphy to ki- children also, and here, and they were running around and talking, talking, and wah, 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 and write. And then their art pieces were so great.、Uh-huh. Of course, they're technically, they practiced a lot. Ha- they have to. Me too. I have to.、Mm-hmm. That's boring, but have to.、Mm-hmm. Practice a lot of basic technical t h i n g But otherwise, why not? you know And so their art pieces l o o k s very free, you know, not have to be have to behave nice. Or, it's not like that. I see. So that's why I thought. Calligraphy, Japanese calligraphy, shodo is to express yourself and it's an art of expression. Looking at their art pieces. <laughs> you know, a long time ago I was teaching、uh, Japanese calligraphy to、uh, Down syndrome kids. Oh, yes. As a Down syndrome.、Mm-hmm. I had been teaching. Them for 14, 15 years、mm-hmm. since they were five or six years old, and they they cannot talk, they cannot speak, they cannot pronounce very well. I see. And first of all, they I gave a sample as a reference, but、uh, they don't know、uh, to write looking at it, they, they couldn't do it. But、uh, after one, two, three, four, five years, and they, st- you know, of course, they were able to write little by little. And one time, mother always be with them、um, because they, cannot, they couldn't come by themselves. And one time, the boy did something bad,、mm-hmm. and mother got really mad at him.、Oh. 
And she insisted, she said, say sorry, you know, go men aside, say sorry, apologize. And he was so stubborn and he was like this and, you know, no. Mm-mm. And he didn't want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and so I put a paper in front of him. And so I said, uh, well, if you don't want to say sorry, why don't you write it? And he was like, and he started think and hold the, started to hold the brush and put black ink on the brush. Mm. He was crying. And he said, he wrote in hiragana, native hiragana, go me nasai. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. And I displayed the piece, several exhibition, and the people who came to see, I, of course I didn't say anything, no explanation, you know, I didn't, of course, I didn't say who wrote it. Everybody stopped in front of that, Gomen Nasai. Right. And everybody said the same thing, wow. This really feel I'm sorry, you know. Wow. And really looks like that. And at that time, of course, he didn't think he wants to write a very good balance, or he didn't think anything like that. He was just uh, crying. And that was really hit the people who saw that heart, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, this is the power of calligraphy. Mm. Because gomen nasai is a letter, words, has meaning. And hits somebody's heart. I was looking every time and Everyone stopped in front of the piece. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, I don't, well, sit upright and keep your back straight and yes. calm. It's yes. also important. But uh, for me, it's, why not, you <laughs> know? Why not? So what? Sure. I know. Why not other things? See, he wrote this and hit people's heart. He he didn't concentrate, you know, he was crying mm-hmm. and so so the students who comes to my place they were so relaxing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they were talking and relaxing about writing, practicing, and <laughs> it's a mess, but uh, <laughs> I enjoy it and they enjoy it. And strange thing, they got an award many times. Wow. So my teacher asked me, how, why, how do you teach? I cannot, I don't want to say it, you know, we are playing. You let them run around the place well, all I over don't. and scream and yell. <laughs> yeah. And they got an award. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I think why not mm-hmm. anything, yeah, anything is good. Let's look at a few more of your pieces. So there's the kokoro again. Yeah. So we've already talked about that one. And the one in the middle is uh, behind you in the room, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? I can, yes. Could you please explain what this character means? This is also a pictograph, um, oldest Chinese character of Tanoshi. Oh, yes. Means fun. It looks fun. Yeah, thank you. 
it's a down part. Down part is a human body, and uh, it is said、um, somebody was holding a bell or something and dancing and having fun.、Mm-hmm. I thought that's nice. Yes, and the one on the left. What character is that? And it looks like a very different style. This looks more traditional. Yes, this is very、uh, traditional, but a little bit. I put, I add a little bit modern style.、Mm-hmm. And but、uh, hisho, which means to soar or to fly. Yeah. Okay, let's look at another one. This is my favorite Japanese character. Many people like this letter. Means dream, dream. yume. Dream. It's a beautiful character to begin with, but、yeah. I think you've done a beautiful job of this. I like the fact that n- not many of the lines actually join, kind of like my dreams sometimes. <laughs> 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 okay,、um, I want to keep going on another question.、Um, you said earlier that children in school learn shuji or shodo in the older grades. We're in the twenty-first century, and the world has become modern. And yet, in Japan, brush and ink calligraphy is still taught in the schools. It seems there's something special about calligraphy that makes it, even though it's such a digital age, that makes it important for students to learn it even now, even in twenty twenty. It's been decreasing, actually. Oh no! Having a calligraphy lesson seems like even in elementary school, junior high school. But maybe just custom from long time, and also maybe they want students. Try not to forget about analog, you know,、mm-hmm. using hand and moving arm and look. Well, five cent, five cent. I was talking about before using the computer and typing and seems like、uh, should. Students, children started to forgetting about、uh, how to write、uh, kanji, Chinese character, because they can type and、sure. search.、Mm-hmm. So the fact that it's customary or traditional to teach it in school, okay, I understand that. But I think there might be more to it than that because、uh, in Japan, calligraphy is it's a vital part of. Many other、uh, traditional arts. Early, you mentioned,、um, for example, the tea ceremony. It comes with calligraphy.、Um, flower arrangement is always not always, but often set with calligraphy. Um, uh, temples, shrines, uh, uh, holy texts.、Uh, in traditional Japanese houses, there's the tokonoma, where there's a calligraphy scroll.、Um, Calligraphy is used in in signs, in advertisements. It's used on menus, in certificates. It's everywhere, and that's not something that that's not the case in Western countries. You don't see calligraphy very often in daily life, or in traditional culture, unless you're studying literature. Why is Japanese calligraphy so embedded in in other art forms here? I don't know about the flow, the world of flower arrangement or other world, but、uh, for tea ceremony or tokonoma, and they put、uh, calligraphy, displaying calligraphy and、uh, one flower,、mm-hmm. and tea cups or teapot and everything. It's a total beauty, total art,、mm-hmm. and and also the calligraphy has it's a letter. So the words sometimes poem, haiku or so has meaning, and maybe 
try to make the people there feel calm or I don't know about uh, religion, but maybe they might be connect with the way of thinking of Zen. Yes. Looking inside, you know, try to look inside of you or in quiet or maybe. Mm-hmm. Calligraphy has clear because it's a word, it's a letter. So yes. I think it's more to make people feel. You have called calligraphy the art of the moment. And I thought that was a very interesting uh, thing to call it. Why, wh- what is the moment that you refer to? What does that mean? Uh, calligraphy, you put uh, black ink brush and when the brush with black ink touch the paper boom and that's it you cannot fix oh. and you cannot add anything that the moment um that's the big maybe big difference between calligraphy and uh, paintings oh. You cannot change the color or add something or calligraphy is like a, I don't know how to say. So the moment when the brush touches the paper, so everything came from you. That's why to express yourself and then through your arm and then touch the paper and appear uh, your feeling or something. And you can't change it or fix it because no. un- unlike a painting, you only get one chance. It's, yeah, it's ready, the set, moment. and then go. And that's it. Yeah. Yes. And that's it. And that's the moment. Hmm. You cannot hide your feeling, your personality. Um, when I uh, make uh, art pieces, I draw and draw and draw and draw and something I don't like, and then again and again and again, and never satisfy. But um, because I cannot fix it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> right. Uh, I like this part, but I don't like this part. Okay, next time. And then next time, this part okay, but n- this part is not enough. <laughs> That's the difficult part and very deep mm-hmm. about calligraphy that I don't know how to say fascinated me. It's because I cannot control it. And I don't know. Well, we'll be there myself. So it's it's like a snapshot of the soul. Yeah, I think so. But the Polaroid of the soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not always. Um, that's the difficult part. Um, sometimes when you feel really depressed and makes you feel cannot write in this feeling mm-hmm. and but s- still okay and started to write start to write and oh it's, I don't know why but it's good <laughs> you know something like that so <laughs> it happens sometimes to me too and at that time I feel like what is what is this I'm very sad and depressed now, and but looks good, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's cannot stop writing. You know, it's very smooth. Or when I'm very happy, and some sometimes good thing happened, and okay, I'm gonna write, and then don't work. Mm-hmm. 
So why? That interests me so much because cannot control. I like it. (laughs) Spontaneous and and chaotic. Yeah, (laughs) maybe. Cannot control. Even you cannot control yourself, you know. Mm. So those kind of things, you know, I, I was talking about before and so you don't have to be behave. You don't have to behave, you know. Whatever. Is your rebel spirit coming? <laughs> you n- you never know. Right. You never know what comes, mm-hmm. you know, from you. So How do you know when a piece of calligraphy is good enough to put into an exhibition? Uh, maybe You said you have to write it over and over <laughs> yeah, and over again. And never satisfied. Right, but how do you know which one? Yep, this is the one I'm going to put <laughs> into the show. How do you know? I don't know. You just throw a dart or or roll a dice? What do you do? <laughs> Maybe time out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. For uh to exhibit uh for the big exhibition there is of course uh uh until you date the limit date mm-hmm. I have to submit so I well, I draw and draw and write and write and write and of course never uh, satisfied like I said before but I tried the time limit and t- to the time <laughs> time limit. Right to your <laughs> deadlines. deadlines. And of course, I knew uh, I have to quit at the some point. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't want to regret. Sometimes I try to think, persuade myself, oh, this is my uh, limit at about this point. Right. Or, uh, <laughs> I don't know, gave up. <laughs> or, <laughs> <laughs> but before that, I write and write and uh, lots of lots of lots of things and maybe tired and... Maybe this is it. Maybe sometimes I feel this is it. Uh, I, I'm not satisfied, of course, but maybe this is it for this time or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the answer I expected, but that's okay. That's good. That's fine. What is, what is uh, the answer you expected? <laughs> well, I, I thought you'd say something philosophical, not something about what? your timeline but or your deadline, but that's okay. That's... It's more realistic. That's that's um, how I work too. Oh, deadline's tomorrow. <laughs> Guess I'm working tonight, and then I just whatever gets done gets submitted. But before that, before the deadline, I write and write and write and suffer and try and try and try, mm-hmm. and then finally something like that. Mm. Mm. Okay, or sometimes, well, depends on what I write. Uh, sometimes I write like a painting or drawing a picture. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel, oh, I like it. Okay, this one, you know. Last couple of questions. Um, you also teach um, uh, Shodo, Japanese calligraphy, to non-Japanese people at international schools and things like that. What do you want people who are not from Japan to learn or to know or to understand about Shodo? I just want them to enjoy uh, writing using a brush with black ink and Mm -hmm. using the tools, Japanese tools. And I just want them to know and I just want them to find uh, joy 
from there. Um, I teach calligraphy to international schools sometimes, but、uh, the children who want to learn is basically Japanese speak, Japanese student, Japanese or half Japanese.、Uh, I give lesson to,、uh, of course, the other non-Japanese students, and some of them are so curious about it. And oh, I loved it! I loved it! And I enjoyed it! You know, thank you! Or they're so、um, happy, and that makes me feel, you know, good、mm-hmm. that I did. I just want them to enjoy it. And maybe. Two to three words. What is shodo to you? What does it mean to you? Fun. <laughs> Cannot control. Maybe the tool to notice about my myself.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, my, I don't know. To for me to learn to know about the heart, difficult to control. That kind of thing interests me and fascinates. Cannot stop. <laughs> well, I hope you never stop. And that was not three words, by the way. But that's okay.、Um, I, ho- <laughs> <laughs> I hope you、uh, don't stop and you、uh, continue on. Um, maybe you could someday consider coming back on the Ronjiro Japan podcast,、uh, so、yes. we can talk about koto. I see you have a koto behind you on the wall.、Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't talk about it at all today, and there's a lot of things that we could talk about. Plus, maybe, maybe you could play a song for us here on the podcast.、Uh-huh. Um, I hope you'll consider coming back sometime. Thank you very much again, Kumiko-san, for your time and joining us today on the Ronjiro Japan podcast. Thank you, JT, for having me today. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us on the Ronjiro Japan podcast. For more insights on Japan from people who know Japan, be sure to subscribe to the podcast right now and check out our website at www.ronjirojapan.com. That's www.ronjirujapan.com. Links to all our content are on the website and in the description for this episode, including links to Facebook and Twitter and our YouTube channel, which also has a variety of videos in addition to regular episodes. Please subscribe, follow, and share. I look forward to talking to you again in the next episode. From Ronjiro Japan in Tokyo, I've been your host, JT. Until next time, o g e n k i d e n e